Hello everyone and welcome back. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about Brahim Diaz. And I say that kind of underwhelmingly because it's like, oh, Brahim Diaz, it's like, how much can you really talk about a young player who barely featured, I mean, he featured a bit last season, um, more games than what probably will be expected, mostly off the bench, more Europa League fixtures. But really when we look at this player's sort of profile, his age, and obviously him just really dipping his toe into Serie A last year, I feel like next season is going to be a more more impressive season. Um, I've said this on my Twitter that I feel like him and Sandro Tonali will have much more, um, just more convincing seasons uh, where they kind of are more confident with where they fit in the team, uh, getting more chances in the starting lineup, and obviously the rotation that we're going to need going into next year, where every game is really important. It's not as if like we can just you know, oh, let's field the weak side for the Europa League. We're in the Champions League now, so we really need two teams that are at a similar quality, you know, two starting 11s of similar quality that can sort of take on the Champions League or take on the Serie A. And I feel like for someone like Brahim Diaz, next season is going to be very important in his development. And I feel like he's, the way he ended last season was very good. Those last five games, scored against Juventus, scored against Torino. I feel like he's going to add on to that and um, and, and probably see why why Maldini and Pioli wanted him back so much at the club and why it's a good thing for us. The first thing before we get into Ibrahim Diaz's bio, I want to say, yes, I know he's the new number 10. And what does that mean? Well, in football, shirt numbers do mean a lot. Um, you obviously give your traditional big numbers like number 9, number 8, number 7, number 10. You give them to players who fit that model. You don't just give a number 10 to someone who's, um, you know, a defender, for example, or even someone who's really below par. But at the same time, we have seen some really weak number 10s in our past. So it's a question of sort of, um, I don't really see the important, really, the importance of, you know, why are we giving the number 10 to Brian Diaz? It is what it is. It's a shirt number. We've seen a lot worse in the past. We'll see a lot better, hopefully, in the future. But at the same time, I feel like that was just done as a sort of like a nostalgia piece to get it over the line. Um, obviously, there were the sort of contra there were talks with Real Madrid for quite a while, so maybe it was for him that sort of convincingness that he needed from Maldini just to be like, "Look, we'll give you the number. It means that you're going to have more of a part to play next season." And to be honest, we were in a position where we did really need just to get someone in the door in the attacking midfield option because yes, we still need to get a replacement for uh, Hakan Chahanoglu, and the search for that still continues this summer. So yes, he's a new number ten. Um, and let's look at look at let's look at Brian Diaz now. Um, Twenty one years old. It's a very young player, and he's very inexperienced throughout throughout his career. You kind of have to say that last year with Milan was probably his most experienced campaign in this sort of senior setup. Um, he, you know, despite the fact he was coming off the bench or playing Europa League fixtures, he doesn't he didn't really have previous seasons in other clubs like Real Madrid or Man City where he featured predominantly in the senior squad because obviously he's so young. So really we're seeing the start of his career and how it's going to develop. When we talk about the deal that got him to Milan again this summer, it's quite an intriguing one and um, obviously amounts speculation of what it was going to be, whether it was going to sign him outright, a one-year loan, a two-year loan. It ended up being a two-year loan with an option to buy at the end of it for around 20, 21, 22 million euros. And um, yes, there is a counter buyback that Real Madrid have in place if we do trigger that that summer um, of 2023 for about 5 million more than what we're going to spend on it. So I believe it's 22 million euros to buy them and they'll have to pay 27 on the buyback, well, the counter buyback. Um, what do I think about that one? It's, it, it is what it is. I guess you sort of, I think Ollie mentioned this on the podcast about, you know, about a month ago. We can't, you can't have a cake and eat it sort of thing where we want to talk about potentially selling our youngsters if, if the, in case it happens, and then inserting buyback clauses. But at the same time, when another team wants to do that for us, it's sort of, you know, we don't like it. Yes, I would have loved to have just the option to buy with no counter, but maybe Real Madrid are so focused on potentially getting bringing back one day, it's just to cover themselves. And we don't really know if it's going to happen. We don't even know if we're going to buy them outright at the end of the two years. Um, it's all just really speculation for now, and it's something we'll have to work out in the future and down the line. All we know now is that he's back with us and that's the most important thing because obviously we are in need of players in that position and hopefully he's gonna have a better season and, um, and and make it an interesting one when it comes to the summer of 2023 and see if we're gonna buy him or look elsewhere, but at least we've had someone for two years in that spot for a pretty low fee, around two million euros on, on, the, on the loan deal. So what key attributes does Brahim Diaz have as a player? So if you don't really watch him or focus on how he plays, 
much suited to the attacking midfielder position. It is, it is an incredible waste to put him out, out as a winger. And we saw it towards the end of last season. Pioli put him in that position and, and stuck Hakan Chakanoglu out left because he was offering a lot more, especially in attack. Um, you know, Hakan was becoming a bit too predictable, um, didn't want to take players on. With Brahim Diaz, he's not scared to dribble at defenders, that dribble at um, defensive midfielders. Something you need in that position and, and it keeps their heads guessing and also like, you're sort of like intimidating them to potentially make a tackle, give away a penalty, all these sort of things because he's so small, he's a low center of gravity, very good at running at players, great ball control, great ball retention. These are sort of all of Brahim Diaz's uh, strengths and something he needs to obviously keep doing when he comes back to the club and gets his games next season. The things I like to see him increase um, his sort of capabilities as at is certainly his shooting from outside the area. I don't feel like it's great. He keeps going for like curved efforts, which are quite easy to predict as a goalkeeper. Um, he needs to hit the shot with a bit more venom, you know, um, just you want to see him put some power behind that shot. At the same time, with that style of finishing, he's very much suited to shooting inside the area. Very good at um, goals in the area or la la latching onto through balls and sort of gets that first, first, first shot and it goes in. If you one goal I would say to look at and what sums up Abraham Diaz is the goal he got against Torino, when Kessie does all the hard work, wins the ball back on from the um, from the high press, slots him through first time, bang, and he hits it past Sirigu and he doesn't really give the keeper a chance to guess where he's going to shoot. That's like really his main strengths when it comes to finishing inside the area, latching onto sort of like knockdowns or um, you know corners. He got that goal from a corner against Fiorentina. So those are really his strengths. He's quite nifty in between the box. Reminds me a bit of like Robinho when he was there and it's quite ironic because obviously Robinho is very good with Ibrahimovic. I feel like those two, Brahim Diaz and Ibrahimovic now could have a nice tandem or Giroud because um, every big guy needs a little guy to play with him. So Diaz's history isn't something we can really delve so much into it's really just kind of a youth career um started off in the malaga youth team until he got moved to man city's youth academy um i think they spent like a, a couple hundred thousand euros or something like that to get him from malaga to man city's youth academy um and get him some experience there played a lot there and eventually in 2018 he made the move to real madrid for about 15 million pounds or um, I don't know what the conversion is to euros, but yeah, 15 million pounds sterling um, got a move to Real Madrid. And obviously from there, they've, obviously, they've got a very good youngster, um, great experience throughout Man City Academy, and obviously he was a Spain under 21 as well. Uh, but really at Real Madrid, he once again, just wasn't getting opportunities in the senior setups. And it wasn't until he made that move last season to Milan that gave him the real chance to get some senior minutes and you know, increase his experience at a top level. So we just spoke about Spain there as well. He has around 25 appearances for the, the youth team setups. He only has one cap for the senior side and he got a goal in that cap as well, which is impressive. I like to think as well how, with how Spain are set up currently, he's kind of on the fringes of being uh, you know called up frequently for their setup. He, I feel like he was not hard done by that he didn't make the Spain squad for the Euros, but it kind of was fair, I get it. He's, I think this next season will be the one where he breaks into that Spain side because I do think they like him. They do, they like his profile. Um, they sometimes put him out on the wings and stuff like that. But I think he has a place in that Spain squad um, and it'll be interesting to see whether he gets more experience on the senior level with um, with the Spanish side. Um, yeah, really, there's not much just to, to, to sing home about when it comes to his experience throughout his career. Like I keep mentioning it as well. He's got great experience at an under-21 level. He is 21, so it really is down to him now to gain that experience and gain his knowledge of the game and develop as he goes along, and hopefully with AC Milan. So I mentioned before about how we finished last season quite strong, and let's just quickly wrap up how he did for us last season. He had he had around 39 games, uh, scored seven goals, got four assists. Um, you know, it's spaced out as well. It's not as if like he had just one blotch of form and that was it for the rest of the season. He sort of scored a few at the start of the season, Got a few towards the tail end of the season, and in the middle of that is kind of just like nothingness because, um, from my memory, he did get an injury. Uh, he was in and out of the team. Chahanoglu was just getting any sort of minute that he wanted, um, and obviously he had to go purely had to go with form and wasn't really co considering Brahim Diaz for the starting spot. And it, in the end of the day, he's young, so it took, takes him a while to gain you know the experience and the intelligence to how to play with this team, with the players alongside him in the league. So it took him a while to really get going. And um, and I feel like if we can sort of judge him on last season, you know, the goals are not too bad. Seven seven goals, four assists, 
that's not too bad. Um, how we finished last season is a great indicator why I feel like his confidence is going to be good, especially coming back to this side. He likes players like Teo Hernandez, um, and hopefully won't be here for, for too long, Samuel Castillo. <laughs> he loves, loves that sort of Spanish contingent that's there. Um, I think he feels comfortable. He feels at home with our squad, and I feel like that's going to make it even more. Um, I'm even more convinced he's going to have a better season next year. Um, and I feel like he needs that. We need that. Um, and also players like Sandro Tonali. I feel like they, him and Brahim Diaz are two main players where I feel like next season will be a breakout year for them. So let's wrap things up with my actual thoughts. And throughout this video, of course, I've been saying that I like the move. Um, it's an in, it's an intriguing deal that we have here um the whole two-year loan deal with the buy with the buy option and then the counter buy option and whatever it is um it, it's it's very intriguing um it's something we i don't think neither squad real madrid or milan will know the answer to until probably a year and a half from now um like january 2023 wherever it is um we're going to know how he fits in with his side. How good does he look? Real Madrid, what's their situation going to be like with um, with their current squad? Are they going to need him back? Do, will they even have space for him in the side? Um, will they just sign him back for the intention to sell him on again? It sort of sounds quite petty if they do it like that. But you just don't know what's going to happen with his future. But what we know about him in the present, and this is really my, me summarising this deal, I like it. You know, we do need attacking midfielders. Um, it would have been a nightmare to get two new ones into the squad. I've always been a big believer with continuity. Um, I feel like, obviously, Chahanoglu's gone. Fair enough. That's what we're under the bridge now. We need another player in that spot. It would have been really bad to get two for the same position because I feel like that's just... It's just going to like lose what we had last year. Um, and I know the attacking department it is quite weak. We need more goals from it. I get that. But you can't just replace everyone. Um, and it's kind of like another reason as well where I, I kind of, as, as the window goes on, I don't think we're going to sell players like Rafael Leal, um, maybe sell um, Jens Peter Haig. But I just don't think there's going to be a complete overhaul with the attacking department because, you know, I, don't, I just can't think many times in the past where that's been a good a good solution despite the fact we need more goals but i would say yes get a right winger bring another attacking midfielder in and probably keep the left winger position as it is with rebic and liao and obviously we got our strikers and hopefully sign a no um like a young profile like kyle uh george george, george, george anyway i'm just gonna call him kyle um so you know i don't want a massive overhaul but yeah bringing it back to brahim diaz i like him coming back um i honestly convinced that he's gonna have a better season next year more confidence uh, with the squad, with how he is, um, his experience internationally or at club level. Um, I feel like, and then also like with the shirt number on the back, saying number 10, that something is inside going to let him know that, you know, this team believes in you, Pioli believes in you, Maldini believes in you, and just really ball out and, um, and you know, increase your increase that you know your, your look and how you play as a, as a player so um yeah i like the deal i like the deal i love that he's back and hopefully he can just like you know, impress us and roll off the back of last season and, and uh we can do well again but yeah anyway guys i'm just wrapping things up here today brahim diaz is back new number 10 let me know let me know what you think in the comment section below uh that'd be great um and yeah until next time guys hopefully some more signings to talk about um i feel like the 3rd of August, I've got that in my head, the week of the 3rd of August will be a massive week where I think we'll see the new attacking midfielder come, perhaps another striker come. Um, there's a few more deals that need to be done, really. If you look at our squad, we're probably about five signings away from the ideal squad size of every two players for every position. Um, yeah, so yeah, attacking midfielder, right winger. Um, we ideally would like an, another centre midfielder to help us when the African Cup of Nations happens. Um and a right back so um yeah so we'll see what happens um and hopefully more to report about but until next time guys forza milan